Hello Rockbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special Grounded video. Today I'm going to be taking you through how to play the game. There are some big changes from the demo to the full game. You may have seen quite a few videos showing you how to do certain things and wondering why you can't do it that way in the full game. Well, there is obviously some differences and I'm going to take you through the best way to survive and pretty much how to play the game in the best way. So right now, as soon as you start, pick up some bits and bobs, make sure you get some pebbles, make sure you get some sap that you see up here and make sure you get some fibre. These are the three things that you need to scan first. Head over to your science pod. You'll find these scattered around and they will allow you to unlock and craft a bunch of new materials. The biggest thing that's changed though is that some materials you still also have to actually unlock them or buy them with science points. We'll come to that in a little while, but go ahead and scan your fibre, scan your pebble, and for the best possible start, actually go into your inventory and craft a woven fibre. And then go ahead and scan that one. What this does gives you access to the shovel early on and the sprig bow. Now I'm going to go through what you basically need as the top sort of five weapons and tools. And we really kick off with that in finding the special little sword. So head back to where you just came from. Don't worry about food, water, you won't need any of that just yet. It will get dark a bit quicker than it did previously in the demo. And I may reference the demo quite a lot as that's what I heavily played. But the bulk of the game of course is still the same. So we're going to head over these rocks. You see a bit of water here, just keep heading sort of straight. And you want to be just on this right hand side of the dirt trail. You'll hit a little marker road, keep following this road along. If you get lost, you want to be aiming for the corner of the house. Just keep going and you should come to a little tunnel. It goes underneath this massive wooden log. That wooden log has got a lot of mites on it. So you want to avoid them, especially as you haven't actually got a weapon yet. Keep going all the way through and then on the left hand side, you should come across another science pod. This is where you want to scan any remaining items that you have picked up on the way. And just hope you haven't actually triggered any of the mites. If you have, quickly scan your stuff and try and carry on. We'll come back to them in a minute. Or you can go ahead and kill one with a rock. And go ahead and scan the mite fuzz too. You can see it unlocks armor glue. That's pretty much the only useful thing for now. Although you won't need that for quite a while, but that will help repair your armors. So you don't have to keep going and getting brand new armor. You can just repair your old ones. Make sure you scan a sprig because that's going to give you one of the best weapons in the game. The spiky sprig. Okay, from that point, keep going. And you should see on the right hand side, a bunch of different food groups. You've got an apple. You've got a hot dog. You'll be able to get some of this when you get a level two ax. But for now, keep going past it and keep going past it and you should notice underneath this leaf a lava blade. Now in the demo this was a full lava blade but they've made it a rotten one in this current version. Now we want to go kind of head back. We're going to go and start off the story segments and we'll pick up any mites that seem to have uh, died mysteriously nearby. Maybe they don't like the drop, it seems like they've died from the height. That's a new one for me. Three mites, woohoo! You'll need these, this is what you're going to use to get a lot of arrows later on in the game. Now you've got your little weapon, so if you take a quick look at it, you'll see that it does nearly two damage, not very much stun, but it is really super quick. Keep picking up some fibres, until eventually you've got enough sprigs and fibres and pebbles more importantly as well, to start making an axe. You're also going to need a hammer too. Make some more woven fibre, grab your pebblet hammer and grab your pebblet axe. Now if you've got a lot of materials you can go ahead and make yourself a torch, otherwise you can brave it down a very dark cave. I personally think you're better off particularly on the harder difficulties making a torch, but as I said if you're feeling really brave then you can just carry it straight on. We're going to go straight to the tripod, we're not going to activate the first part of the story and we're going to go ahead and start clearing this area out for mites. These ones are okay, ignore them. Just take care of the live ones before they hit you first. Move around as you're hitting, dodging left to right so they don't jump and attack you. If you need a bit of stamina, take a step away and then get back in. 
Usually it only takes two swings to kill all these guys. Lots and lots of this. And you should start seeing these you've got to clear. Jump up, there's a couple on the cable up here. And then you want to head down to the cave. Now as I said, if you happen to have a lot of materials, you could go ahead and craft yourself a torch right now. You can use this to gather lots of grass and the dead grass, so you don't even need your axe. Now you will come across a couple more live ones in here, that's why you really might need that torch. And since we've got an abundance of materials, I'm going to go ahead and craft it. Now, the reason I said you don't have to use a torch is because if you run in here really super quick, you can see these things. Right, I'm going to the torch there. You can grab them. And you do have to actually craft with them now to make a torch. Whereas previously, you could just use them straight away. It does take a few bits of fibre. But if you run up high enough, you can see you can make a slime mould one instead. It gives a little bit more of a green glow. Kill these two on the wires. And this is going to help with the story progression. And obviously we're going to need that to get science points to unlock more stuff. Now, we've got quartzite. We want to see if we can use our hammer that we crafted earlier. Smash it open. You won't need too many pieces. It's really only useful for making a repair tool to help repair your bases later on. And it does repair individual weapons. If we go over to it now, you can see I can repair our mouldy rotten lava blade. And although it's still rotten, it does mean that it's not going to necessarily break. If a tool does break, that's when you need the actual armor glue. That's what fixes that. I would say keep at least five pieces on you. And as I said, eventually you'll be able to make a repair tool if you really want. Now, optional, you can go in here and pick up a brand new scab. Might Rider will change things up a little bit. And you can choose to have it on daytime or nighttime. So, with your blade, you may see something a little bit growing underneath. Ignore these for now, you're going to need a spade to dig them out. Previously, you could use the lava blade to dig them up, but it seems to have maybe nerfed that, so you will need to get a, a shovel or a spade. Now we're going to head back to where we were. So follow this little bit of a road, and then turn left. I will pick up that as well. Pick up as much honeydew as possible, never really missed the opportunity to grab some. We're back where we spawned. Now we're going to carry on going to the science and we should be able to scan some more items as time would have gone past. If you run out of science time at one of these pods, you can go ahead to another pod and use that one so you can keep going back and forth. Inside it, go ahead and scan the lava blade. You'll now be able to make a brand new fresh proper one, but you will need some new bits for it. After that, maybe do dry grass. That'll unlock some base bits where you can hold your logs or your stems, which you get from dandelion stalks and pretty much just go through all anything else that you've got to spare. The dew collector is pretty good as well. Ideally, if you manage to kill any creatures on the way, that's what you really want to be scanning too. Particularly aphids. So if you can get hold of one of these guys, even though they're super quick, that will be a really good start. As you keep running up, you're going to kill that guy, and you're also going to pick up the gnat fuzz. We're going to need a few more of these, and we'll be able to make a bow. Come on, little gnat. Get back here. It's a bit of a luck of the draw. Sometimes you get four pieces, sometimes you only get three. Grab some mushrooms on the way. You probably got pretty hungry by now. The aphid honeydew replenishes your health a tiny bit. And food is always just good to make sure it's full up. Got our aphid. There we go. Ladybugs do eat aphids, so be careful when they're around. You don't want to aggravate one of them. Start the story mission up. And then we've got to do part two once we've cut down this grey blade of grass. That should just be about it. You can activate the cutscene. You'll notice the explosion over at the tree. Pay attention to that, that's where you're going to be heading very soon. At this point as well, you might as well start actually using your axe. You can hold it and put it in whatever slot you want at the bottom. You can use the clover leaves to make a very basic armour. This in fact might be something you want to scan. Once back at the science pod, see if you've got enough charge to go ahead and scan the clover. This will unlock a brand new armour set. And scan an aphid. 
This will give you the aphid slippers. You only need one aphid more, and we might be able to craft them, and they'll give you a speed boost. Although right now, before it gets too dark, we want to head over to that big tree. Depending what game mode you've got, you may really want to take a few moments, you don't have to do this as rushed or quick as me, and go about and see if you can find some more gnats so you can craft a bow. One thing I wouldn't do yet is build a base. You don't need to build a base just yet. Make sure you try and do the story section first. The only thing I would say you might want to make is a crafting bench. The clover is the cheapest and easiest one to make too. It really isn't that much in terms of defense, but it does stop you from getting hunger and thirsty as much as long as you're in all three pieces. So let's place one down and let's just go ahead and make it. Pop it in and now we just need a bunch of woven fiber. And then it's up to you. If you want a bit of extra speed, I would go for the raw aphid ones. Or if you want to actually get a buff, that means you don't have to eat as much. I would go for the full suit of clover. Each piece of the clover armor is going to help you reduce your hunger. Now armor sets do take up a piece in your inventory, which is a bit annoying. But obviously make sure you do equip it all. And you can see it does give you a set bonus of moist as well. Pretty much this special bonus when you apply all three pieces means you don't have to drink as much. So it's really good for a starting out. It's not going to give you much protection. You can see its defense is not even one for the head or for the shoes. In fact, overall, it's more or less only two defense overall. So at this point, you just got to get to that tree. Now, if you go certain directions, you'll come across all sorts of creatures you don't want to mess with. So for now, I would stick to finding the juice box you see in front of you. This will be a good point to get some liquid inside you. There should be a juice drop somewhere nearby we're good to go now as you keep going if you come across any weevils go ahead and kill them you're looking for a weevil nose particularly weevil meat's great but if you see any of them you really do want to get one if you can keep heading and you should be okay there's not often not that many bad guys around this area that are challenging it's only when you get to this point you've got to start looking out for spiders now there's a few areas you can go there's a little tunnel here that will take you safely underneath some areas And if you just follow the tree around to the right hand side, eventually we're going to come to where we saw that big massive smoke. Now if you're wondering what these are, these are grubs. You need a spade to dig them out. But before you get a spade, you also need the acorn pieces. You can pick these up here, otherwise normally you have to use your hammer and you'll go ahead and just crack and smash them open. Also look out for the acorn bits. These are edible, but more importantly, they're used to make granola eventually when we get honey. Now we're already getting a bit full, so I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple of things we don't really need. We won't need that top just yet. You can go ahead at this point as well and repair any weapons you've got. Usually one or two pieces of court right will do it. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and start crafting yourself a spade or shovel as it should be called and dig out some of them grubs. They will be useful for scanning soon, but I think you're better off going into the smoke first and actually activating the second part of the story. Now I go high, often the spiders won't necessarily crawl along the tops here, but you will come across some of them down below. They're usually right inside that big entrance way there. Also at this point you may want to make a lean-to. This is going to save your progress, and it's definitely worth doing. There you go. Now make sure you click use on it. And you can see also you can sleep through the night too. Or a few hours at least. Might be worth investing in a fibre bandage as well if you've got some of the resources. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I've got all my tools equipped. A few things you can do with this is that whenever you've got a food item, it will automatically go in that slot. Because you can assign slots. You can decide whether or not you want it to be a ranged weapon. A torch. A tool, food, or healing. And so no matter whenever you pick up one of them items, it will automatically go in your hotbar where that slot is. Don't underestimate that. Sometimes when I've filled all this up with tools, it's a real pain in the butt not having access to a piece of food or something to heal me quickly. So always make sure you've got one slot dedicated to healing. All right, let's go and activate the next part of the story. This wasn't in the demo, 
So I'm really glad we get a chance to actually see what's going on now a bit more. And this is where you're going to learn how to craft floors for your bases. So I really don't recommend you try building a base until you've actually gone and talked to this guy. Now be careful. That glowy thing looks like some there is some enemies in here. You can pick up the BTU, it'll give you a little bit of extra story. Now the puzzle. Press the middle one, then press the one on the right, and all six will be green. Then go ahead and pull. Now be careful, there is an enemy, he is not friendly. The best thing you can do is try and lead him towards a doorway as he will kind of zap you with his electrical power. Or just keep running rings around him like this, conserving your stamina and then going in for another hit. Depending on your difficulty, it will be a lot more challenging. You can see it gives you science points. We're going to need a bunch of that to keep progressing and unlocking new stuff. You keep hearing sounds around you, that's the spiders above you. Don't worry, they can't get you in here. There's a doorway here. You can run down pretty much and pick this up. This is another set of science points. See, it's giving me 100. Other than that, there's not much else in this room. Now go ahead and rescue this guy, Burgle. Let's get you back in action. While he's yapping, go ahead and listen to it. But as I've done it a few times now, we're going to go into this next room and we're going to get 500 big science points. Take a little look around if you want and be nosy. There's another piece of the story here. And you can go back out to the room where you just came in. Other than that, there's not much going on. Other than that, there is an analyzer here. I would go ahead and scan the acorn shell. And this will give you access to the acorn armor pieces now. And pretty much anything else you happen to have left over, go ahead and scan it as early as you can. It also gives you science points. That's definitely why you always scan stuff, even if it's a bit useless. Right next to him, you'll see this. This is a chip. Now, if you picked it up right and there's no bugs, you go ahead and talk to him. And there's a bunch of different options. Click I found a burgle chip. And this pretty much opens up more options for you to use science points to buy more items. Click have any work for me. And this is how you're going to gain even more science points for today. Now it changes pretty much every time you come here. The first time I did it, I had to scan some aphid meat. Hence why I thought that might be popular. But right now it wants me to go and kill three gnats. Kill three worker ants. And complete marker at Great Oak Beacon. Go ahead and click all three. And this is how you're going to get more items. So pretty much the more chips you're giving, the more items you're going to be able to unlock. You can see I'm 20 short away from actually doing this. But I can go ahead and scan a multitude of things. I can unlock stairs, floors and triangle floors. I can go ahead and unlock torch upgrades. Or I can go ahead and unlock fortified bases for 5,000 science points. So we're probably a little bit away from that. I would go for the scab scanner. This is going to allow you to detect nearby science. Obviously something really important. So it's pretty much night time now. Now you can go ahead and sleep, especially if you've put your lean-to outside. Now it's morning time, you want to make sure you've maybe got enough bits of food. And we're looking for 20 more science points. So there's a marker to be got at this. Let's look up and see if we can find it. Keep running across the trees. You see these little sticks. Run across all these, picking up anything that you can need. And you want to get on top of this, as there is some science points there, and you may well need them. It looks like this is the marker as well. So I'm going to grab the science points, and I've definitely got enough now. But since I'm here, I feel like I want to complete this marker. Just need a little bit more fibre. I should be able to make my first waypoint. Be careful, spiders do come out of their little hidey hole. Head back up to the logs. 
get onto the stick and go ahead and complete the first marker. As I said, that may not be the mission one for you to get more science points, it is random. But there we go, we've got an extra 100. Let's go and spend our good earned money with Burgle. Now, a few things to note. This is Big Sap Collections. You can use your hammer to get it, and it's really good, you'll get lots of sap. Also, just to show you what it looks like when you're digging a grub up, since we've got the spade now. Let's find one. Literally dig in the ground where you see the little line running up. And then switch to a weapon to go ahead and kill it. I'm going to pick up the meat as we're probably going to end up scanning this lot. Make sure we've got enough space. And we're going to pick up the grub goop and the grub hide if you can find it. Now head back to a burgle. One day I'll get you. One day I'll get you, Weevil Nose. So now we're back, we can go ahead and get our raw science traded. So as I said, I think it's better to do this. I don't think you necessarily need to build bases with floors in the first day. You should be able to build yourself just a decent little box for now with some walls. Or just not bother like I did. In fact, you're probably better off at saving it and getting the next stage. Although you will end up needing the walls anyway. So go for the scanner science for now. Also, you guys have been telling me that the bases you've been building are getting attacked a lot more frequently by ants and other creatures. So it might definitely not be worth it just yet. Let's scan some more new items. Particularly the hide. As this will unlock the hide armor. And go ahead and do the goop as well. And this will unlock the smoothie station, which is really useful when you get a few more resources. So there we go, we've done the mission, we've completed that section. I've shown you guys how to get science points and how to unlock flooring if you want it. But more importantly, take a look at all the different armor suits we can now craft. We can go ahead and start working towards acorns if we want maximum health and also a bonus of uncrackable, which normally means that you won't get killed by a jumping wolf spider. We could go ahead and work towards the grub goggles, which are gonna give you maximum stamina and another perk I've not quite worked out just yet. And tools wise, we've pretty much unlocked all of the basic set. And we just need to get ourselves some nat fuzz and we can go ahead and make ourselves a sprig bow. Let's finish that off and that's pretty much complete as well as get some arrows for the bow. As that's what you're gonna need to take on a large majority of the creatures until we get really good at blocking and defending, especially with a decent weapon. We also need to get some thistle needles because we need to make our spiky sprig one of the best weapons in the game. Early doors, anyway. Make sure you save your progress. And if you really want to, this ain't a bad area to build a base. Although it has to be said, there's no grass chunks around here, so you will have to keep going back and forth. For now, I would say leave the lean-to there. And that's probably the best thing for it. One thing you might want to make is a small little bit of storage. You can see I'm pretty much full up. So I can make a large one. And pretty much go ahead and put it next to your lean-to. This way if you die, you've got some extra resources in case you need to craft any new weapons or items to get back to your stuff. Don't throw away your spoiled meat. You're going to need it if you want to grow some mushroom farms later. Although it does despawn even in your inventory eventually. Now I've lightened my load a little bit. I'm going to run over and I'm going to go and get some of the thistles. And you should see one just by this rose bush. Again, pay, take things a bit slowly if you plan on a hard difficulty. Go ahead and see if you can get yourself some better armour. But coming over here, it does get a bit dangerous. As you will notice, there are a lot more spiders towards this wooden post section. So just pay attention to your surroundings and start hacking away. Now this is a weed, you need a level 2 axe to chop it down and you get lots of stems. But you can get stems from dandelions too, and that's pretty much the wood pieces that you need to make a lot of the reinforced base parts. You can see you're gaining lots of thistle needles, and this is what we're going to use to make our arrows. You can't actually destroy this plant, at least I've hit it a bunch of times and it never has. I would try and aim for around 50 needles. If you've made a little storage unit like I've done, that should be okay. You can also go ahead and pick up some flower petals just to get more science points and they'll also actually make you able to craft lure arrows which didn't really work in the beta 
So I'm really hoping they do work now. Remember, you want to scan as many new things as possible to unlock new science points that so really that you can good. spend more money. You've also got nectar here as well. And this is all stuff that you can use to make edibles or smoothies, especially pollen, as you're going to need that to make lure arrows. It's pretty tiny, so make sure you're scanning the floor properly. Yes, we got a weevil nose. Now we can start thinking about trying to get a mask. At this point, it's a pretty safe area, despite it being filled with spiders nearby. So now we've got our thistles, we can actually start thinking about making our bow. So I'm going to go ahead and make some of my arrows, as I've got plenty of my fuzz in my backpack. You can see I've got 40 arrows now. But don't forget to make your spiky sprig. Three sprigs, five needles, and two woven fiber. So far I've found that this is one of the best weapons against smaller creatures like ants, maybe lava and stuff like that. And then for the bigger creatures, you want fast moving uh, items or use the bow and arrow or something like a spear. And so wrapping up the video, let's craft that bow and let's get some arrows going. I've come all the way over to the water section towards the sort of um, south of the map, directly from where I was. And I found this guy. If you're a big fan of the Super Toads series, we have Rash, but more importantly, we have lots of gnats. Now gnats are stupid. They will fly into the water and they can't get out, so you can kill them pretty easily. Otherwise, they're not really that hard. Only one hit usually with a spear will do the job and take them out. But they do follow you for quite a long period of time. So yeah, if you don't want to be bugged by them, you're gonna to have to run pretty far. But yeah, take them out and then just go in the water and collect all the bits. You do get, obviously, science points as well for killing brand new creatures. Not every time you kill a creature, only when you've killed a brand new one for the first time. Here is the location on the map, so you can see it all the way down there, and that's where we kind of were, so it's directly south. Back at base, I finally had enough gnat fuzz now to make the bow, and it was a simple case of just making lots of the arrows, and I had bunches of them. And pretty much you can do this at range with a lot of creatures. Just find somewhere really high or find somewhere where the creatures can get stuck. A bit cheesy, some of the creatures do kind of learn the spiders will jump. But eventually you'll whittle the creature down and it's just a quick and easy way. And you do get to get back all your arrows. One more and he's going to be brown bread. And there we go, job done. So now we can get the ladybug parts and if you manage to kill an ant on the way, you pretty much have access to scan all of the available arm sets except for maybe the spider set or the b set now the b set doesn't look like it's in the game just yet as i showed you guys with some showcases before with the demo it looks like the bees won't be coming for a little while yet but you can spawn in the b arm sets in creative mode just to see what it looks like and that is it guys that is how to survive the first day and a half i would say the afternoon's coming in now you can see we've spent a bit of time getting some of them resources. And like I said, it would have been a lot quicker if I had all the gnat fuzz. So maybe before you go to the oak tree, try and see if you've got four pieces of gnat fuzz to make the bow. And you should be able to find the rest of the stuff really easily. I'll be back in part two showing you guys how to craft the bulk of these armor pieces. Legit, we're going to go and actually get the resources without creative mode. And I'll show you some more tips. So make sure you like, make sure you're subscribed. And go and check out all my other grounded content. I'll see you rat bags later.